When you own a pet family as large as mine, it becomes very easy to forget to show you guys a lot of the animals I'm keeping. Obviously their care isn't being neglected in any way. I'm enjoying them personally in my home, loving and cherishing each and every individual. But you guys on the other end are asking yourselves, hey, does he even still have this? Or Dion, I haven't seen your snakes in over a year. Where are your tarantulas at? It's been some time. And then of course the Madagascar expedition has been taking up the majority of my upload schedule for the last few weeks. So the point of the matter is, I wanna give you all some updates. You haven't seen Kira here in quite some time and unfortunately she's not the topic of today's video, but today's video is gonna be all about a few of my snakes. Specifically, Sylvan Knight, my California red-sided garter, the Thamnophis Sirtalis infernalis, which in my opinion is arguably one of the most beautiful snakes in North America, let alone in the world. What's exciting about today's video is I finally found her a future mate. So before we check on Silva Knight to see how she's doing, we've got some work to do because we have to set up a temporary, I say temporary because I have big plans for how these snakes will be housed in the future, a temporary enclosure to house this male in before we go pick him up. So let's go do that now. But before we do that, I wanna quickly introduce myself. My name is Dion, I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles here, like little Kira, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post one or two videos a week. Well, all right, let's get to work. We gotta see what supplies I have and put something nice together for this animal because boy oh boy is he cool. All right, everybody, for this garter snake's temporary or sort of quarantine setup, I'm gonna be using a 10 gallon aquarium along with a matching or proper size screen lid. Now, snakes can be escape artists, so it's very important that we don't leave the lid like this. No, no, we're gonna use these heavy duty screen clips to ensure that the lid is properly secured down on the tank and will not be popped off by the snake. For substrate, I'm gonna be using this Zoomed Repti soil. I like the blend and I think it'll help maintain a proper level of humidity, whereas using something like Aspen would probably mold if we added any moisture to the enclosure. Now it's time to start adding some terrarium decorations. Here we have a nice exoterra cave that'll look naturalistic and also obviously provide the snake with a good sense of security. Next, I have another one of those pieces of fake stone barrier that I use to make my croc skink paludariums. I'm gonna use that as a little tunnel. And then I have an assortment of pieces of cork slab, which are also gonna provide some climbing spaces and make up part of the basking site. In addition to the cork, I'm gonna have these slabs of stone in the basking area and they hold heat so well for the animal to warm up. Naturally, our slithering friend will need a water dish to stay hydrated, some leaf litter to dress over the substrate, a ceramic socket basking light, and of course, a daylight basking bulb. All right, time to clear this space and set up a terrarium. First thing we're gonna do is get our substrate in there. Nice thin layer, doesn't have to be a lot. Again, this is a quarantine slash temporary enclosure. We're not going bioactive or anything here. Just wanna have a good layer of substrate. Next is obviously my favorite part, setting the enclosure up, envisioning the habitat that you wanna create for your pet. Here I'm placing in the cave on one side, and now I'm figuring out where I want the rest of the decorations to go. I thought about putting this little tunnel here at the back so that he has a sense of security when he slithers around the back of the enclosure. And then next to that little tunnel on the right side, we're gonna create our basking platform. Obviously we wanna to try to maximize some of the height, but again, this is a temporary enclosure. We're gonna work with what we have and make the best of it. I'm trying to pick a good position for all these quick slabs and then figure out how I can incorporate those pieces of stone and how they can help again to hold good amounts of heat. So they wanna be on top. I wanna to place them on top of the wood so that they get the first hit from that heat light and get nice and toasty for the snake. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I also have this nice silk fake plant by Exoterra that I'm also going to add as some sort of cover over the left side where the shelter or cave is. That way the snake again has an added sense of security and enrichment to move around through, just trying to make it the best possible temporary enclosure. And lastly, we're gonna place our water dish centered in the middle and 
of course, fill it up. Voila! If you ask me, this is a pretty solid option for a temporary setup. I'm convinced this animal's gonna do really well in here. Time to install and set up our basking lamp. And then lastly, I'm gonna put those screen clips on to make sure that they're working the way we want them to. Looks like a good fit, pretty snug. Oops, I almost forgot one thing. I didn't put that leaf litter in. So let me quickly add a little bit of that and then we're set. And again, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that he's gonna love it. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what do you like better? Snakes or lizards? I know that's a hard question. And to be honest, I wouldn't wanna be asked it, but this is my channel, so I get to ask you the questions. Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give you a comment at heart. We can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks. Off I go to pick up my brand new California red-sided garter snake. All right, everybody, here we go. We got him, he's home. I'm really excited that we also found that grocery store that sells all those tasty goodies for my snakes. Thank you, Braden, again, for putting me on to that source. When I went to go pick up my garter snake from Braid in Brookhouse, he was kind enough to point out that there's an international grocery store nearby that sells a whole array of really ideal food sources you can feed to garter snakes. So I grabbed some frozen frog legs and a bunch of frozen silver sides. So yeah, we got lots of options now. We have these smaller silver sides that are not headed and gutted. Uh, these headed and gutted ones, but they're much larger, so those will be nice to chop up and use and definitely cheaper than the fish ones, but it is good to have like the gut and head intact. And then of course we have these frog legs, which are quite large. I have to figure out how the best way to offer these is gonna be, because even if I thaw one of these out, that's a lot of food for just a few snakes, but technically I don't see why the rhino rats could be eating this as well. So maybe we'll try that. Lots of variety here. And then of course I also have nightcrawler earthworms. So, um, and then sometimes I do chicken hearts and pinky mice periodically, but I, I don't do too many rodents for the garters. Thank you again, Brayden, for showing me <laughs> that I could go to that grocery store. So I'm really excited to offer these animals more variety because you know, it's, it's not natural for garter snakes to be eating too many rodents, but here he is. Look at this guy, isn't he incredible? Holy moly. The coloration is just out of this world and I love the black banding. It's just perfect. Yeah, he is, he is perfect. He doesn't even care. He's literally eating in the take home container. What is going on? This guy gives no cares. He's literally going to eat this silver side in the container that he came home in. Because I wanted to film the process of introducing him to a new enclosure, but I had to film another piece for the video, I did leave him in his container for a few hours when I got home, so I gave him a water dish. But after feeding Silva Knight, part of a silver side fish, I figured, hey, I might as well test him and see if he's hungry. Can you believe it? He ate in his take home container. This guy is food motivated and that makes me happy. I'm not really worried about him eating, clearly. All right, everybody. So here he is. I'm thinking of the name Inferno because he's he's actually quite spazzy. Um, I mean, he has the colors of an Inferno, but then he also has the bit of the temperament of one. He's, he's very defensive. All right, we're gonna carefully bring him out here. Hopefully he doesn't musk too much. Okay, buddy. I mean, at the end of the day though, he is a garter snake. So sort of to be expected. I don't really handle Sylvanite at all. And she is, oh boy, she musks a lot. So to be honest, this boy is being pretty awesome as far as not musking goes. But yeah, you can see the, uh, yeah, the Infernalis just have this incredible coloration i mean look at the 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 blues and the reds i just don't want to hold them too close to the light but you can just see that coloration is unbelievable ventral ventral color Ooh, ooh, ooh. so nice okay 
Let's put him in his temporary home and let him settle in. Move a little bit. Isn't he handsome? Look at this guy. He's fantastic. Thank you again, Braden. I really appreciate owning this guy. All right. Here you go, buddy. Oh, 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 you're okay. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna go in. There we go. He did not take long to figure out where he wants to be. He's going that way towards the heat. I don't blame him. He can warm up on that side. And again, those rocks are gonna do wonders for that too. So I would say that was a huge success. Didn't get musked once whatsoever. Uh, let's get our clamps back on here. There we go, perfect. Let's let him settle in and who knows, maybe he'll come out a little bit. We can see, I'm gonna set this up like this for a time lapse and we'll see if he comes out and explores. As you can see here, it didn't take long at all for Inferno to settle in. He's taking full advantage of those rocks. Get warm on them and it's gonna be great. Wait, okay, so we got some of the silver sides. Sorry, that's a bit gross. It's half of one, it didn't break off evenly. Uh, silver sides thawing out here. And once they're thawed, we'll try and have a look and see how Sylvanite is doing and see if we can feed inferno and see if he wants to eat now that he's a bit more settled into his home all right buddy yo let's give this guy a nice silver side let's see if he'll come out for it oh my goodness he is very excited <laughs> this guy's awesome there you go buddy so as you can see, even after a few days of settling in, this guy is, man, he's food motivated. It's so awesome. Not shy one bit. Well, as you can see, this, uh, this, this little man is settling in very well to his new home. I couldn't be more pleased with that. He's eating well. All right, everybody. So here is Sylvanite's enclosure. Sorry about the glare. But you can see she has quite a few hides. She also has a nice piece of slate up there for basking and warming up. And then here's her cool side with a water dish, lots of plants and decor. She's usually in here. There's lots of moss in there as well. But I'll try and coax her out and then we can give her a night crawler. I don't give them too many night crawlers because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure most of these are wild caught. Parasites and maybe even pesticides, things like that. I mean, I've used them for years and never really had an issue, but I just like to be safe. It's just for that variety and she really does love them so we'll give her a night crawler and have a closer look she's grown a lot since i got her way back when she's absolutely beautiful but she is just too young for now to be housed with inferno <laughs> so she's kind of moving all over the place here friends so i can see that she's over here and mr basil is like hey i want what you're giving her no buddy this isn't for you sorry and if you hear all that rustling Look who's awake from his hibernation. Well, that's another update video we're going to have to do soon. So anyways, lots going on in the reptile room, friends. Lots. Let's see if we can coax Silver Knight or Sylvie to come out and have a nightcrawler. So it kind of seems like Silver Knight's not interested in eating right now. I obviously don't want to stress her out. But we'll see what happens here. Interesting, interesting. Well, that can't be good. Worms crawling all over her. I'm gonna read that as not interested in eating. Well, for whatever reason, she is not interested in eating, which is interesting because she usually loves eating. It's like, no, thank you. That's fine. Well, at least you guys got to see her. She's doing great, okay? <laughs> she has a nice setup. She's growing, she's eating. Can't complain, can't complain. I mean, the only complaint I have is that I guess she didn't want to eat for you guys on camera, which is, is what it is, I guess. I don't know.
Listen, because I care about you guys so much, I want you to enjoy watching Silver Knight eat something. So this is some footage I'd recorded a while back of her taking a silver side. Um, yeah, she's, she's feisty. I don't know what it is. She just didn't want to eat this time, I guess. But as you can see here, she's, uh, she's loving this. So, yeah. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> It is what it is. Sometimes these animals don't want to eat, and that's okay too. I mean, that's a big meal also, worth considering. I'm sure you'll get to see her at another time. At the very least, I can say this much. If you want to see her eat, check out my Instagram account. I'll plug it there because I post lots of feeding videos of her eating. Lots of reels. Cool. Now, as always, before we end today's video, I want to take a moment to sincerely thank my channel patrons over on the Patreon platform. Thank you so much for everybody's additional support there. For as little as $2 a month, you can support this channel, the animals, and everything I do here with them, and unlock a whole skew of interesting perks. Everything from discounts on merch, a direct line of communication with me for all your reptile and amphibian or invertebrate related questions, and more. We periodically do contests, exclusive videos that only patrons get to see and there's a whole bunch of interesting ideas I have coming up. There's even tiers where you get a handwritten thank you card. So if you're interested in learning about how you can support the channel further, feel free to check out the link in the video description. When you become a channel patron, you get a shout out from me in an upcoming video. So for today, we're thanking our two newest channel patrons who have signed up since last video. There's Alexandra and Studio Coldblood. Thank you so much for your support and I look forward to conversing with you more on the Patreon platform. Well everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I'm extremely excited to finally have a male Infernalis that I can pair up with Sylvanite when she's old enough to be bred and they will be living together permanently afterwards. It's just that she's still clearly too young and I don't want to risk an accidental mating, which probably wouldn't be accidental. I think it would just happen. Yeah, she's too young. So they'll be separated until she's large enough to be bred with. Inferno. I think I'm thinking of calling him Inferno. Um, I know it's so similar to the subspecies, but I think it really suits his attitude. He really is an Inferno. He's, he's a feisty boy. So let me know what you think of the name. If you have any other suggestions, you can drop them in the comments section down below. And don't forget to answer today's question of the day. Thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos pertaining to keeping snakes, or specifically garter snakes, check out the playlist up above. Take care, everybody. See you all next week. Bye.